Now, I gotta imagine, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one that heading into this show, Survivor Series on Sunday, is starting to have some real trepidation about what this final farewell for The Undertaker is all about. I, I can't be the only one, and I know I'm not the only one. And I think more and more people are starting to really think about this and say, yeah, they've been pumping this up almost too much. They've been putting this out for weeks way too hard. Like, this company in general just does not put the promotional teeth behind things that they should. Like, even when you think about this product in general and how generally irrelevant it really is, like, I saw something recently on Twitter, of all places, talking about how Sasha Banks got discovered uh, by the producers of that Star Wars Mandalorian show, not from WWE, not from being on a Raw or a SmackDown, but from, what was it, the episode, one of those uh, internet episodes talking about eating hot wings and eating hot wings, like that's where she got discovered. So that's a reflection in general just how irrelevant uh, WWE has largely become and just how poor their once massive Titan Tower marketing machine and apparatus used to be, and it is no longer. So the fact that they would go out there to the length or degree that they have with this frankly, catches me off guard. And I'm sure it does for a lot of you, too. And makes you really start to wonder, man, they either got to have something really, really big in store here, or this is actually legit. They're trying to give this man his due after 30 years, and you know we're going to be set up for either a major disappointment or a whole bunch of overwhelming emotions of and feelings of sadness. Um, there's got to be something. And I talked about this already in this 30 Days of Taker series, so I'm trying not just to be repetitive in the topic. It's just, it's come up and it's kind of been thinking about it. Um, but this just feels off in general. Now, I certainly, for a guy that had the streak at WrestleMania for decades, that never lost at Mania for decades, you know, I look at it and say on the one hand, like, if you were ever going to have The Undertaker retire you'd probably want to do it at a WrestleMania. But there is something really cool about the thought and the concept of the place that it started is the place that it all ended. Like, that's the true type of full circle type of stuff. Like, even when I think about the Chicago Bulls, let's say, and I think about Scottie Pippen started his career with the Bulls, but then eventually when the Penguin, Jerry Krause, decided he wanted to ruin the dynasty before he had to, he traded Scottie Pippen off to the Rockets, where he didn't want to play with Barkley's fat butt anymore after years. He got traded to the Blazers. And then a couple of years later, the Bulls signed him for the mid-level exception, and he came back home, and he ended his career where the hell he should have. And that's full circle type of stuff there. So when you think about the place that he debuted, Survivor Series 1990, you know, when you think about it, what better show for the taker to character to have its swan song than at Survivor Series 2020. 30 years later, it's where it all began. It's where it all finished. Now, Grant is not going to be in the arena where he originally had his debut. That would have been even more full circle stuff. Um, you know, I, I certainly get it. But I think for the problem here for a lot of us as fans, like, we know wrestling is always a work, and everything can potentially be an angle. And even the things that feel like or we believe to be shoots, we know deep down in the cockles of our hearts that we're being worked to at least some degree. Some things work themselves into a shoot, granted, but there are still work basics and work elements involved there. And especially when you look at this, you say, man, they're really trying to advocate for this, and they're really trying to push this. Like, something smells fishy and funny here. And you're totally justified for thinking that. And then you're also thinking about the fact of, why would Taker retire now? Why would he feel the need to have to do that? This is a guy that for years would appear once a year or work once a year effectively at WrestleMania. And then here at the tail end of his career, which we all acknowledge is clearly the tail end of his career, and you wonder how much more gas he's got in that bike. You know, this guy's been working a couple of matches a year, especially some of the money grabs in Saudi Arabia, for example. So you start to get that kind of Brett Favre vibe about The Undertaker. 
every time you get start hearing about, hey, this is going to be the end, this is it. Like I thought of WrestleMania 28, 2012, the end of an era match. When you saw that shot of him and HBK and Triple H on the top of the ramp, like that felt like that was it for all of them. Even though you probably knew that it truly wasn't going to be the end for Triple H, you certainly thought it was going to be the end for Shawn Michaels, which it was you know, somewhat. Not really, though. He had already been retired a couple years before, but you get what I'm saying. But it felt like that was the perfect time. 20, you know, it's over. This is it for Taker. And God, how much I wish that was true. But every time, every year, like you look and you say, okay, is this finally going to be it? 2014, WrestleMania 30, Brock Lesnar ends the streak. You're like, okay, now the streak is over. He ceases to have purpose. Go away. And yet he kept coming back. And then you have the whole thing at WrestleMania, what was it, 33, where he wrestled Roman Reigns? And you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, that was really bad. That should truly be the sign that it's it. And then you take off your gear and you lay it down in the ring, like typically the sign of a fighter when he's about to retire. You leave their stuff in the ring and they walk out, exit stage right. Like, that should be it. But then the next year, he's wrestling John Cena in a squash match at WrestleMania. And then he's wrestling other matches. And then you get the Boneyard match this year at WrestleMania 36 against AJ Styles. And, you know, so many of these times you thought Taker's been done before. Taker's going to retire before. Similar to Brett Favre. That yearly saga that you had had to hear about and deal with him. Whether Brett Favre's going to retire. Whether he's going to come back. And da 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 and you just get to the point where you got kind of taker fatigue. Because you just didn't care as much. Because you never believed it was the end, and you always thought he was like he was going to come back again, and it just kept having diminishing impact in return every time that he did. So you have to forgive us for not being all that bought in that this is truly it. Now, it could very well be. And when you look at the Last Ride documentary, like so many things have been positioned and set up in recent months. And even the past year, like, you can go back to WrestleMania 36 and win in that match against AJ Styles and get down the bike and ride it off into the darkness. Like, that'd be a perfect, perfect match. Cap it. Like, stop. Now. No more. Never again. That's it. But you just don't know. And there's also this part, too, like, do you really want The Undertaker's final farewell to come in front of no fans being there in attendance physically? Like, this is the type of thing that you should trot out at the main event of your show. He addresses the crowd, gives some type of quasi-retirement speech, and then the fans give him a freaking 10-minute standing ovation. And you go dark, and that's the end of the show. Now you're talking about doing this in the damn Thunderdome, and it's just, like, 2020's already messed up enough. Like, how messed up would it be for a guy that has meant so much to the company, a true legend, a true icon in sports entertainment, in WWE history and wrestling history, to go out... With no fans there live in person. And maybe there's a part of me that says, hey, you've already milked this for so long. Like, can we get one more match against somebody? Like, could Kane come out and they have a retirement match at WrestleMania 37? Can we have a Sting come out and get the match that we never got, that some of us wanted for a long time but got over it? Like, can we now not get over it? Like... Is it going to be somebody else? Is it going to be something else? Like, I find myself sitting here waiting because I just, I just, maybe I don't want to believe it, but maybe there I have good reason to not believe it. I'm just wondering if we're going to get set up for major disappointment come Sunday night, Survivor Series. Because if it is the end, if it truly is the end, and if it truly is as it's being packaged, it's going to feel really weird. It's going to be a somber moment. It's going to be a sad moment. And if those dummies do this and don't put it at the end of the show, like it, it really has a potential to backfire on them significantly. But then if they don't, and this was just all a work and all a hype up to build up to something that would culminate at Mania, then that's also going to feel like kind of a letdown and kind of a bummer. And you're kind of like, oh, I don't really want to deal with that anymore. You know, maybe you have The Fiend come out and that's the last match. And you know, Taker's already lost twice at WrestleMania, so what the hell's the third time? You want to do a cinematic match one more time? Well, there you go. The Fiend versus The Undertaker. Why not? Um, you know, I think maybe there's a little part of it. Like, for me, as a wrestling fan, and being a longtime wrestling fan, 
I've seen so many people that I've rooted for and cheered for over the years have either died, uh, proven to be like real life a-holes or racists or just not good people in general. So I think about, you know, it's, it's kind of a death of a piece of my childhood again. Like having to potentially say goodbye to another one of those guys that I've watched for years, that I've cheered for for years, that I've been a fan for for years. And, you know, it's tough to think about that type of stuff. So maybe there is a piece of me deep down that as much as I might act like on camera, that it's crap and it's frustrated if this whole final farewell thing proves to be one big swerve or one big work. Maybe that's what I really want. But at this point in time, I could probably get over it if this truly was the end. It will feel funny. It will feel odd. It will be really somber. It will be really sad. But all good things must come to an end. And as, as whack as it would be to do this in front of no real fans, this does feel like the time. So you guys let me know. Do you think this final farewell is legit and on the up and up? Do you think this is a work? If you think it's legit, why do you think that? If you think it's a work, why do you think that? Let me know in the comments section. Thank you guys for watching this 22nd installment of the 30 Days of Taker video series. We're getting closer to the finish line by the day. Uh, I've enjoyed doing these videos so far. Got a little more than a week to go on, and I'm going to see it through to the finish line. Smash that subscribe button if it's your first time checking out this channel, because i got some more videos coming up. Thank you, guys. Take it easy.